Pokemon, the world's most valuable franchise, has given us a full 11 games on a Switch. In addition to the main series, there have been spin-offs, mini-games, free-to-play titles and even ventures into other genres. Today I would like to present you my personal top 11 out of all Pokemon games released on a Switch so far. Stay tuned and welcome to the Switch Gems channel. Before we get started, I'd like to share a few words. I don't think there's a franchise out there with games that are so hotly discussed and where opinions regarding the releases diverge so widely. Accordingly, I'd like to emphasize again that this list is absolutely subjective and simply reflects my personal experience. Of course, I would be interested in how you would rank the games, so feel free to write me your top 11 in the comments. With that said, let's get ready for my top 11. Pokemon Cafe Remix to be honest with you, I don't think there's a Pokemon game, aside from that weird Carpador game on smartphones, that has ever interested me as little as Pokemon Cafe Remix. In this free-to-play game, you run a cafe in the Pokemon world, serving dishes to Pokemon customers, solving puzzles and expanding your cafe's offerings. For me, it doesn't have much to do with Pokemon and to be honest, it's not a genre I can really get into. So let us not waste too much time here and go straight to the number 10. Pokemon Quest Pokemon Quest is another free-to-play game that was actually made for smartphones and tablets and in my opinion is much better suited there. We are located on Tumblecube Island and control a team of cube-shaped Pokemon through block-like worlds, fight against other Pokemon and collect various items and objects to expand our base camp or to boost our Pokemon team. Oddly enough, we can only use Gen 1 Pokemon, however, since I grew up with this generation, it didn't bother me at all. The game is basically kept rather simple, but is in fact somewhat fun as a game for in-between. As I mentioned at the beginning, however, it belongs on a smartphone for me, since Switch games can be a bit more complex for my taste. Pokémon Tournament DX When I mentioned venturing into other genres in the intro, I had Pokémon Tournament DX foremost on my mind. First released on the Wii U in 2015, we were able to play this Tekken-like fighting game on the Switch in 2017. While we could already fight some Pokemon in Super Smash Bros, for example, which worked really well, I honestly had high expectations for this game. However, the rather dull gameplay ended up disappointing me a bit. Pokémon Tournament DX is by no means a bad fighting game, but in my eyes it wasted an incredible amount of potential. Actually, this genre should fit Pokémon really well. Maybe there will be a sequel or a completely new independent beat-em-up someday. I would honestly like to see that. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX The Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series actually passed me by for a long time. It wasn't until the 3DS that I first got into the game series with Super Mystery Dungeon. That same year I caught up with the GBA titles which serve as a reference for the Switch spin-off. In Pokemon Mystery Dungeon you form a rescue team with your chosen Pokemon partner and embark on a thrilling dungeon crawling adventure, rescue distressed Pokemon, uncovering mysteries and battling other Pokemon. Unlike in the main games, you control the Pokemon directly and don't act as a trainer. Even if I like the idea in general, I still preferred or I can put myself into the role of a trainer better than in the role of a Pokemon. I hope you understand what I mean. Nevertheless, the game series has its justification for existence and rightly has a relatively high fanbase. Pokemon Unite Please don't blame me if I tell you that Pokemon Unite was my very first MOBA ever. Before that, I had little interest in this category of games. However, as with any Pokemon game, I wanted to give it a chance regardless of the genre. And I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised. To start, Unite is a free-to-play game and yes, there are microtransactions, but I never got the feeling that pay to win was or could even begin to matter. Pokemon Unite is, along with Pokémon, one of the few truly skill-based games in the franchise. And somehow, this simple and repetitive gameplay grabbed me. Each Pokémon plays differently, has more or less predefined roles in the course of the game and I especially like the multiplayer aspect. Even though a large part of the community wasn't exactly happy about a Pokemon MOBA, I have to say that I really had fun with the game and I still do from time to time. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl And the first more or less classic Pokemon game, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl has taken the 6th place. 
The remake of the fourth generation, which is basically one of the most popular generations of all time, has caused quite a stir. I mean, <laughs> actually pretty much every game in the main series since the 3DS has caused quite a stir and controversy. But in this case, in my opinion, absolutely justified. While Pokemon Platinum in particular is considered the definitive experience of the fourth generation, the remake has incomprehensibly been based almost exclusively on Diamond and Pearl and has simply left out so many good elements. In addition, I personally and also some other fans dislike the experimental and in my eyes absolutely inappropriate childish chibi optics at all. What I actually liked a lot though was the Grand Canyon of Sinnoh. Here you have the opportunity to construct secret bases and adorn them with statues. These statues have an impact on the types of Pokemon that appear in the optional hideaway dungeons. But this was especially beneficial for the post-game content. That being said, I'm sorry to say that these remakes are some of the worst Pokemon games of all time, at least in my opinion. New Pokemon Snap We actually start the top 5 with another remake. This time, however, it's an absolute spin-off classic. Pokemon Snap from 1999. In my eyes, new Pokemon Snap managed to impress with really great graphics for the first time. Most of the controversies I just mentioned arose because of the weak technology and graphics of the main games. New Pokemon Snap has actually managed to capture the charm of the original and translate the visuals into the modern age. The gameplay hasn't really changed much and that's a good thing in my eyes. My biggest criticism however would be that the length of the game is clearly too short for my taste and replayability was unfortunately barely or not at all given for me personally. I rather perceived it as a bridging game and as a result didn't really connect with the game. Nevertheless I liked the execution and especially fans of the original were picked up quite well I guess. Pokemon Sword and Shield plus DLCs Slowly the air is getting thin and I think especially from this point on the list, it looks different for almost everyone. I have chosen Pokemon Sword and Shield for the 4th place. However, I have to say that without the two DLCs, the games would most likely not have made it into the top 5. Even though I don't find the main games as terrible as some of you out there and I especially like the courage regarding the wild area, I personally think that only the DLCs made Pokemon Sword and Shield really good games. I also think that Sword and Shield has done more for the competitive scene than any other Pokemon game so far. And I also like the introduction of the raids very much. What bothered me the most was the, even for Pokemon standards, super boring story and especially the incredibly annoying and poorly written characters. I mean, Swordward? <laughs> Shieldbird? What the hell was Game Freak smoking when they put these two jerks in the game? If Sword and Shield would have had the quality of the DLCs from the beginning, both games would have definitely landed on the podium. As it is, it's not quite good enough in my opinion. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee About two years after the big Pokemon Go hype, the two Let's Go titles came on the market and took over a few elements from the mobile game. There are two reasons why Let's Go ended up ahead of Sword and Shield. Firstly, I have been a Pokemon fan since the very beginning and therefore started with Blue and Red. Accordingly, Let's Go has enjoyed an enormous nostalgic advantage on me. I also really like the catching system, which at least added a bit of variety. I would have liked a bit more complexity and after story content, but I still had a lot of fun with these games. I also liked the graphics a lot and the riding and flying on Pokemon was implemented very well. I wouldn't say that Let's Go is the definitive Kanto experience, but I think it's a much better remake than the fourth generation. I think opinions differ widely here as well, so what's your take on Let's Go? Pokemon Scarlet and Violet And now it's getting really critical. Scarlet and Violet actually managed to make it on the second place for me, and there's a reason for that. I know that the game had a lot of technical issues and I also know that the graphics are absolutely horrible, even by Switch standards. However, for me, especially with Pokemon games, it's all about the fun of the games and yes, I had a hell of a lot of fun with both editions. So let's start with the things I liked a lot. On the one hand, I was very pleasantly surprised by the story and also by the characters. At least in my opinion, no Pokemon game has ever been this deep and emotional. While most of the characters in the predecessors actually annoyed me, I was really interested in the background story of many of the protagonists in Scarlet and Violet. I was almost shocked when I realized that we were actually dealing with plot twists and deep characters. 
I also extremely enjoyed the open world approach and the different story threads. If I didn't feel like fighting the evil team, I simply turned to the arenas or followed the path of the legends. This finally brought some variety to the otherwise very linear Pokemon games. I actually also like the new Pokemon with a few exceptions, however I would have liked to see a few more interesting type combinations. What I didn't like was the setting itself. I would like to not be a 10 year old kid on my Pokemon adventures. Why doesn't Pokemon finally become a bit more adult? I think a large part of the fans grew up with Pokemon and therefore are not 10 years old. Otherwise, as I said in the beginning, add fun with the games and I hope the Pokemon company keeps these innovations. That the game was and still is technically and graphically terrible I mentioned briefly at the beginning and I think the topic has already been discussed enough. Accordingly, I'll spare myself the topic and leave it at a mention. And so we are left with only the first place. Pokemon Legends Arceus or Arceus or whatever. Initially, I expected the game to have much less impact and was relatively neutral about the release of Legends. However, when I saw the first gameplay scenes, I was flashed and my hype increased rapidly. Especially the open worlds, the setting and the catch system made me extremely curious. When I played Legends for the first time, I was actually a bit disappointed by the start of the game. A confusing prologue, a boring tutorial and much too long dialogues. They could have kept it much shorter and made the introduction a bit less mysterious. But when I was allowed to leave the city for the first time, I immediately fell in love with the novel gameplay. I've already mentioned that I found the catch system in Let's Go to be a nice change of pace. But here in Legends it was on a whole nother level. Never before I had enjoyed catching Pokemon and filling the Pokedex that much. The seamless transitions into battles also made the game experience much more immersive. I also wasn't really bothered by the fact that Legends only has open areas and not a directly open world. I automatically took a lot more time to explore each area and catch every Pokemon I came across. For the first time, it felt like a real adventure that I could more or less create myself. What I didn't like as much was the fact that the value system was changed and the trainer battles became a bit too secondary for my taste. Otherwise, Legends is definitely one of my absolute Pokemon favorites and would certainly land relatively high in a definitive list of all Pokemon games ever. As mentioned in the beginning, this list is very subjective, I know, and I guess it looks a bit different for almost everyone. So please feel free to write me in the comments if you agree with me or if you can relate to my explanations. I'm especially curious about your top 11. If you liked the video, feel free to support me with a thumbs up and a free subscription. Thanks a lot for checking in and see you next time on Switch Jams. <music>